The UFC's decision to include former NFL player Greg Hardy on the second season of Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series has drawn a lot of criticism from fans and the media since the news of his inclusion was announced in April of 2018. For those who are unaware, Hardy was arrested on domestic violence charges in 2014 and sentenced to 60 days in jail. The sentence was overturned on appeal when the victim didn't show up for court, with the district attorney's office saying, the state further has reliable information that the victim has reached a civil settlement with the defendant. Hardy went on to sign an $11.3 million one-year contract with the Dallas Cowboys. But disturbing photos and the 9-11 recordings from the incident led to the NFL trying to suspend Hardy for 10 games. They ended up settling with a four-game suspension to avoid a legal fight, and Hardy wasn't invited to play with the Cowboys the following season. So why is the UFC giving Greg Hardy a shot? What is their history when it comes to athletes involved with domestic abuse? Mixed martial arts is a sport with a troubling connection to domestic abuse. According to a 2015 documentary from HBO's Real Sports, the volume of domestic violence arrests from MMA fighters is at a rate of 750 in every 100,000, compared to the national rate of around 360 per 100,000 men, and 210 per 100,000 in the NFL. A number of active UFC fighters have been charged with domestic assault with various responses from the company. In 2014, the UFC cut featherweight Will Choke. After the organization learned, he was discharged from the Air Force for multiple instances of assault against his wife in 2009. In 2016, welterweight Michael Graves was suspended and eventually released by the UFC after being charged with misdemeanor battery, family violence. According to police reports, Graves punched and elbowed his fiancée in the head during an argument. Following Will Chope's release, White explained the UFC's general policy. We're going to have situations where guys have some incidents, he said. It depends on how big your incident is. They're not all going to be the same. It's a case-by-case -case basis, and it depends on how bad it is. As White said, not every fighter with a guilty record on these kinds of charges is let go. Abel Trujillo pled guilty to two counts of domestic violence in 2007, but was still signed to the UFC in 2012 and remains on the roster to this day. Anthony Lapsley, who fought for the UFC in 2013 and 2014, has had three separate convictions. Cody East was signed through Dana White's looking for a fight despite having been sentenced to three years in prison on child abuse charges. Shortly after losing twice and being released by the UFC, he was arrested for aggravated battery, aggravated assault, and false imprisonment. A 911 call captured the moment where he kicked down a bathroom door to attack his girlfriend. He's breaking in. Please. Oh my God. He's opening. I gotta go. Please. Anthony Rubble Johnson, who was charged in 2009 with domestic violence, battery, death threats, and destroying a phone to prevent a report of a crime. In the end, Johnson pleaded no contest to misdemeanor charge of domestic violence and was sentenced to three years probation, community service, and domestic violence counseling. Johnson fought for the UFC twice in the months immediately after his arrest and was given another fight six months after his conviction. In 2014, Rumble would be suspended by the UFC after the mother of his children claimed he knocked out her front teeth. Two months later, her civil case was dropped and the UFC reinstated him. Perhaps the most disturbing case involved light heavyweight Tiago Silva, who got into an armed standoff with SWAT officers in 2014, after allegedly threatening to shoot up a jiu-jitsu academy with his wife inside. The UFC released Silva, but several months later, the charges were dropped because Silva's wife left for Brazil and refused to return to testify. The UFC re-signed him with a statement from Dana White on UFC.com saying, he was acquitted of all charges, how do you not let the guy fight again? He went through the legal process and came out of it untainted. A week later, Silva's wife shared cell phone footage with Brazilian media of him brandishing a handgun and threatening to give her a bullet. Details from the original arrest report also resurfaced, including accusations he put the gun in her mouth and threatened to murder her. The UFC quickly re-released Silva. After the incident, the organization changed their way of handling serious criminal issues. The new procedure involved suspending fighters when a violation of the UFC's code of conduct occurred. From there, law firm Campbell and Williams conducts an investigation and advises the UFC on a course of action. Several UFC athletes have gone through this process with domestic violence accusations and have been cleared to return to fighting, including Travis Brown, Michael Johnson, and Alex Nicholson. Not much is known about the investigation process, but Travis Brown spoke about it shortly after being reinstated. It wasn't a legal investigation, Brown said. 
I couldn't be like, oh, talk to my lawyer. It was like, so this is where we're at. They said this is gonna be tougher than going through the legal process because there's nothing to cover my butt. There's no laws. You want your job? You have to volunteer because somebody made lies up about you. Getting back to Greg Hardy, his signing to Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series isn't exactly an out of the blue thing. Dana White has been more than willing to talk to the press regarding Hardy, and he was open to giving him a shot as far back as 2016. I'm one of those guys who believes that we're all human beings and we all make mistakes, White told Fox Sports 1. And when you make a mistake, you pay your penance. Whatever it might be, and you should be allowed to make a living and move on in your life. In the event leading up to Hardy's decision making series process debut, to let him White on had the this show. To say. Well, first of all, you know, he went through everything, the whole legal process that he needed to go to, play, went back to football, played uh, for the Panthers, then got cut, then moved over to Dallas and played there for a while, then was cut from there. I guess he had a real bad drug and alcohol problem. Started getting into MMA, cleaned himself up. If you talk to anybody that he trains with, male or female, they say that, you know, he's a very good guy. He's, he's very humble. And, uh, you know, everybody deserves a second chance. And the guy was never, was never uh, charged with anything. He was never, uh, you know, sentenced or anything like that. So... We're gonna give him a shot. Can I ask one more about contender? White is technically correct. The Greg Hardy sentence was overturned on appeal, but the questionable circumstances surrounding the whole situation are enough to draw attention and criticism to how the UFC handles the issue of domestic violence in MMA in general. While their policy of independent investigations is a positive step in the right direction, the Hardy case highlights a history of UFC being willing to overlook troubling evidence and side with their fighters if a court doesn't end up convicting them.